Welcome back, everyone, to the last 0k replay exhibition match for today. There we go. Will be a match between Slava1 and Luchin Chanch. Luchin Chanch? Lou. Lou's going for F bots. And Slava going for the. For. Yeah, Rovers. That's the name of it. And it's a new map, Mecha Antonia. It's a pretty map. Although the water's impossible to see under. How shallow is the water? Like, this this is actually water. This isn't void water. You could put stuff in the water. Which might happen because we have an Amphbot factory being used. But I can't see what's in the water. I, I literally can't. Okay, so the water is effectively the same as what it is in base at Insonia. That's good to know. It's also quite pretty. In a monochrome sort of way. Is that specular to get at it? Uh, not really. Oh well. Anyhow, where was I? Oh, right, yeah. So, like I said, Slava going for... Amphibot's yeah, going pretty ex quick expansion over, actually. Sorry, not Amphibot's, Rovers. And very quickly going in for the raiding as well. Lou probably won't lose their metal their main factory. They lost a metal extractor. Might lose a second one. Definitely lose a second one. Ooh, that's shit. That is a very nice raid, Slava. Two metal extractors and slowed down military production for a single scorcher. That is efficient. That is very efficient. At the same time, Slava going over and just continuing to expand, just keeping their economy going. Very forward expansion, though. Like, a surprisingly forward expansion, actually. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I just would have expected there to be a... I don't know. Less of a... Like... Neglect... Uh, less... Less time spent outside the main base and more time in the main base, but, I mean, you can build up the metal extractors in the main base whenever you want, I suppose. I don't know. Third mech is complete. Dying from point... Or, King's Death pointing the third mech is incomplete. No, no, it got finished. Lou's got that sorted out. And, at the same time, they are actually getting their economy and still on a reasonably good track. Though, again, that's mainly because Slava has not built up their main base mexes yet. And they are about to start doing that. So once that happens, Slava will have quite the advantage when it comes to their main base. Fortunately, Lou isn't quite in a position to contest directly. Well, that'll be a little awkward, but that's how it goes. So Lou at this point is in a reasonable enough position militarily. Mostly focused on defending what they have. Slava, on the other hand, they're setting up, they're expanding quite a bit. Look like they're probably trying to figure out where to build out at some point. Not entirely clear. I mean, Slava's economy is strong, but their energy infrastructure is not going to be enough for their metal, and they don't have caretakers. On the other hand, Lou has... They have a conch right here. They could be using that immediately, but they are not. I don't know why they're not. Why aren't you using the conch? It's a good conch. There's nothing wrong with the conch. What is wrong with the conch? Well, whatever's wrong with the conch is not entirely clear. Ooh, of course, archers coming in. Archers, as we saw earlier, are very strong in this patch. And actually, I'm kind of liking this set with Lou. They have... It's taken them a little while, but now they have the caretaker in the main base, setting up a forward expansion. First one on the low ground up front. And while Slava has gotten their main base metal extractors up, they 
don't have enough energy to actually use all the metal, and they are accessing quite a bit. And the Diamond Furnace keeps pointing out, excess leads to Towel Throw. And that is a fair point. That makes this lava has. Oh, they built storage. They have built storage. That is all they have done, but I guess that means they're not accessing, which is not bad. Get some solar collectors up. Commander's still building a lot more metal extractors, though, and they don't have... I mean, the thing is, I don't know why they aren't reclaiming these crates. It's 150 energy each. That's a lot to help just even out the energy income for at least enough time for the solar collectors to be built. Actually, just to double check... No, wind generators aren't worth it. Okay. The Slava, I'm really not liking their position right now. They had an, a strong early position, but Lu has been pushing forward. They got a solid army just defending whatever they need to. They're building a fusion plant, so whatever excesses are starting to happen are going to be dealt with very quickly. There really isn't all that much in the way of any real threat. Wait, is this... Why can't I see... Why is this... Oh, right, because I said they do a control group. My bad. Anyway. So, fusion reactor up for Lu. They are Lu Chin Chanch. Lu Chin Chanch? Lu Chin Chanch? Lu Chin Chanch? Compact tree is so oil thin. <laughs> yeah, I was asking. I think it was Dregs who made this map. I was like, because I thought this was like ash, like on the ground. But no, apparently that isn't. It's just sand. So I was thinking of like you know after a bunch of fights and all this stuff gets rebuilt with concrete, and the area in the bottom is just ash from all the burned robots, from all the explosions, and all the nukes and everything. And then the lake's just either ash or oil. But probably ash, because oil has a different speculative reflection pattern. Ooh. Speaking of robots being burned and destroyed, Slava wiping out Lu's army. I said before about Lu's frontline position. While I still agree with it, it's starting to look a little bit iffy. Grizzly came in here, no amp pad, which is, that's kind of the perfect, case for the, perfect use case for the amp pad right there is Grizzly in one factory and then support units on a pad. Not sure if Lou is aware of the F pads. They could really use one right now or use another factory. One of the two. But when you have like 30 plus metal per second, it's not a bad time to think about at least pads, if not other factories. Sorry, not pads. Plates. Plates, if not other factories. Slava coming in here with a bunch of fencers. And the boys are a really nice choice against them. Boys Grizzly actually really nice choice against them. Not what I normally would have recommended, but then again, Antbots are weird, so yeah, not a bad choice. Normally I'd recommend going for like a heavy unit, like a heavy assault unit, followed by some kind of riot damage unit. Which in this case for Amphbots. No, actually, Grizzly Boy isn't a bad option for the heck of a thing of it. Yeah, I and mean, Grizzly Archer wouldn't be a bad one. Well, actually, Grizzly Archer would be kind of iffy. Amphbot doesn't really have a tanky unit other than. Well, boys are pretty tanky. And Grizzly, which is extremely tanky. Although, tanky or not, that Grizzly did go down. Opening things up for Slava, they should be able to start... Oh, if they take out this army, they they have a good opportunity to come around and start ripping apart the rest of these metal extractors. More fences coming in. The numbers simply are high enough. The boys are going to have difficulty dealing with it, and indeed they do. That is a dead boy. A couple of fences do go down. But it's just not enough. Slava, despite their weaker economy, 
simply has they've won, they've won an attrition they've got a very strong position to push in from the use of badgers is kind of rude but very effective same time second factor coming in we have an air pad or airplane plant rather air pads are the refueling base for airplanes airplane plant coming in here which you know phoenix will help get rid of the flaws won't really help get rid of a lot of other stuff though Scorcher's coming through. Hmm. Yeah, Scorchers are... Scorchers don't do as... They do okay against boys. I guess for cost they do fun against boys. It's a little tricky. You gotta be careful because of the slow from boys. They can really mess with Scorchers. If you're fighting into a mixed army. If you're fighting into just boys, it's not a big deal, but... There's scallops there. There's probably going to be another... Maybe another grizzly? No, boy scallop, but... Oh, there will be a grizzly at some point, but boy scallop is actually... That's going to be tough for Scorchers to deal with. And somewhat wisely, maybe questionably, this is not happening. The Scorchers are going to be coming in. There they are! No, they're not. Ooh. Okay, the claws come in. That that opens it up. It's no longer a mixed army. The Scorchers coming in to deal with it. But Phoenix is to try to stop that. And that damage has... Ooh, that's already done a lot of damage. Didn't really get rid of a lot of the claws, but did damage a lot of the badgers firing them. Still, I don't see Slava having been slowed down significantly as a result of that. More phoenixes are ready. Might be able to help deal with this. Well, more Phoenix is coming in, and down they... Ooh, taking several badges in the process. Not a bad shot there, but the scorches are simply too numerous, even with the scallop, which is theoretically hard or theoretically a counter. It's just not enough in numbers. Scorches coming in here should be able to get rid of at least one of these factories, getting rid of a lot of the caretakers. Air plant is down, and bot factory is... Taking some damage, but the caretakers are the main priority, as they should be. Caretakers do repair, and of course, getting rid of them gets rid of a lot of productive capacity. But no, the factory is down. Scorchers have done their job. Slava, I don't see any way they could lose from here, unless they just throw the game. Both air pads are down as well. The there is no way to refuel or rearm or repair. Not refuel. Rearm or repair these phoenixes. That Phoenix going for one last shot before it gets shot down. We'll lose Commander. Kind of out of position to help rebuild. There are, thankfully for Luz, several conches here. So there is at least a way of rebuilding the base. But the problem, of course, is opportunity cost. And Slava, although they are accessing significantly in this time, they are still continuing to rebuild their army. Lose Commander should be able to get rid of the fencers before dying, but that still opens them up to a second attack. And that second attack is likely to be their death. They're going for another Ampot Factory. Several characters are up to help build it quickly. But even with that, the excess is simply not getting taken care of. Granted, both players are accessing a bunch. Lava is still accessing quite a bit. Just now, finally building enough caretakers to make that no longer the case. And getting a roper plate as well. Good choice. Get a few more extra small units. Like, considering it's taking three seconds for a single scorcher to be built up, and then it takes another second of them to go off the pad. Yeah. That's why you build plates. That should increase the amount of scorchers that get built up in any length of time. Ripper is coming in, though. It may not be relevant. The Ripper's able to get rid of all these ducks that have been built up. Should be able to get rid of the factory with that issue. Certainly get rid of several caretakers with that issue. I don't know if Lou has anything up their sleeve. Beyond that, the conches go down. That is it. Those conches are the only thing keeping Lou in the game. And with them gone, that is it. Slava takes it. And the excess was actually pretty close to even. 4,000 each. Although, Slava had a bit more excess early on. They, they were consistently accessing. Lou was only really accessing near the end, but 
That was still a lot of excess. That was still a gross amount of excess. Slava, however, had the larger army the entire time. That's what it came down to. Really, that grizzly was the only time Lou came close to Slava's army size. And that's the tricky thing with playing Anthbots, is knowing when to add the grizzly. But, again, that's kind of what plates are for, is to soften that. You build an amph plate, you, know, you don't have to worry so much about when to build the grizzly. You can still get your support units up at the same time. Now, granted, your metal is being split, but Lou had like 50 metal per second at the time. Was, that wasn't a big deal. <laughs> well, <laughs> chat. Well, the right person resigned this time. It's 50 50, the right person resigns. Easy thing to get wrong. Hey, anyway, that is going to be it for me today. Thank you for watching. Warzone Hope you enjoyed that. Lost. There, I did actually get a replay at the end of this, which will be for next week. That is a Mecha and Sunny game, but with top level players. That'll be really cool to watch. But we'll get to that next week. Which actually, it's Halloween now that I think about it. Normally, I would do like a spooky game on Halloween, but honestly, I don't think people really like that. So I'll just do the normal thing. I don't, I don't see the point of throwing in like spooky game or anything. It's not really been it's not really been appreciated. So I'm just gonna stick with 0k and we'll be back next week. Oh yeah, Scary Land. I'll have to make sure that get Scary Land gets into the maps that I do replays casts for next week. Because Halloween Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Good call, Kingstead. So when anyway, until then, thank you all for watching. Have a good night and see you probably next week. That's the plan.